PIP solution. Uh, we've got Clear9 with Craig Jacobs. He's the founder of Clear9. Uh, ROI Consulting, Bob Richter. Uh, American Payment Solutions, Patty Benitez, Avalara, John Litwa, uh, One Software Solution, Cody Smith, and V Technologies, Matt St. John. And thank you guys all for being with us today. Uh, so Clear9 is an industry leader for Sage 100. Uh, they have a lot of experience with the Sage products and mainly Sage 100. Uh, they create web-based extensions, so for e-commerce, and they have an integrated solution with all the other solution providers today that are going to be speaking. ROI Consulting is the developer of InSync, so they integrate their with the third-party software integrations with the Sage 100 accounting software, and they have users all over the U.S. and Canada with over 20 years' experience. Avalara. You, everybody's probably familiar with Avalara. Uh, they are a sale, the leading provider of sales tax automation uh, compliance processes, uh, integrated solution into all the Sage products. And today we're going to be talking about their integration with Sage 100. Uh, and American Payment Solutions, they are an endorsed merchant solutions provider for restaurants, hospitality, software companies throughout the U.S. and Canada. Uh, they are known for their great rates, so if anybody out there is interested in saving money on credit card processing, uh, contact American Payment Solutions. ScanCo is a, the leading provider of warehouse management applications for Sage 100. They've been doing this for years, since 1989, and they have a very strong relationship with Sage. Uh, they also have iOS, Android, and Windows applications for automating warehouse processes. And Starship is a Sage develop a goal development pro, uh, partner for for Sage 100, 500, and they also have an X3 integration. They've also been in the Sage business since 1989, and. Uh, they have very strong relationships with ScanCo and leading EDI providers that also have integrated solutions with, with Sage. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump into the workflow here. So today we're going to be talking about how a customer can place an order through the Clear9 e-commerce um, uh, storefront and how that Storefront is integrated through the ROI Consulting InSync and uh, third-party integration app. And all of that information flows into the Sage 100 sales order. And American Payment Solutions can process that order with their credit card processing module uh, for automated uh, payment. And then Avalara will calculate the sales tax based on where all the rules of that order, where they are, what taxing jurisdiction, and make sure that the sales tax is computed correctly. And that will be all uh, indicated into the Sage 100 sales order entry and invoice. And then that goes into a uh, scan code, automate the pick pack processing for that order. And then that flows in, all the order information flows into Starship to calculate the best shipping rates to fulfill that order based on all the different carriers that your company uses. Uh, so we'll calculate the best rate and, and uh, populate the order with the all the shipping information, tracking number, and all of that. We'll go back into the sales order and populate the invoice with all the respective information. And again, uh, American Payment Solutions will process the credit card transaction. And Avalara, if there's any extra shipment charges or anything like that that need to be taxed, Avalara will account for that. And all that information will be reported back into the Clear9 uh, e-commerce app so that the customer can look their order information up on the Internet if they wanted to review any tracking numbers or you know, have kind of that self-service customer satisfaction, they can go ahead and, and look all that information up through the Clear9 uh, web interface. 
And then all the tracking information that came from Starship will also be reflected over in Clear 9. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Craig so he can show you how you how the customer can place their order on the Internet. Okay, great. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, let me just see here. Uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger. So, yeah, yeah thanks, Adrian. So what we have at Clear9 is we have uh, an integrated e-commerce solution for Sage 100 that's very tightly integrated. We use the, uh, the in-sync module that Adrian mentioned earlier to synchronize the data. And some of the benefits of our application are that we maintain all of the data in one location. So when you're setting up items for sale on the website, uh, pricing, item descriptions, all of that is actually done within the Sage application. So you're not maintaining data in two different places and maintaining item images in two separate places. Um, our application is also somewhat unique in the way that it communicates with the web server because uh, these days, you know, pretty much every time you open up uh, the technology section of the newspaper, there's been some sort of breach or some sort of security issue. So from the get-go, security was a primary concern when we uh, built the application. And it, it works in such a way that you don't have to worry about firewall configuration or anything like that. The in-sync module reaches out to the web application and pulls data in. You don't have external applications pushing into your uh, accounting system from outside the firewall. And it's extremely tightly integrated. So we strive to uh, expose all the relevant functionality within Sage. So for example, we do customer specific price code, price level pricing the way sales order does. Um, and that includes uh, customer price level overrides by say price code or product line and also pricing by total quantity. Um, we leverage the warehouse availability, inventory um, item warehouse availability table to calculate essentially real time uh, stock for the website. Um, we expose you know, open invoices, invoice history, sales order history, purchase history to the customer so the customer can have access to all of their in information. Uh, we even expose paperless office information to the customer so they can retrieve copies of sales orders and invoices from the website without contacting uh, customer service. And last but not least, you know, we, we strive to integrate uh, with other applications that integrate with Sage 100. So for example, our application is Avatac certified. Uh, we integrate with American Payment Solutions um, and all that for a seamless end-to-end uh, -end integration. So with that, uh, I was going to do a brief demo of the functionality. We have lots and lots of functionality, but I just want to kind of stick to the basics and run through a quick um, you know, overview demo. Um, and so with that, I'm going to uh, make my screen a little bit bigger here so that it's a little more visible. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into, well, first I would just add that, you know, from a visual perspective, we can make the website essentially look any way that you want, want it to look. So we, we color match your existing website. We can build an existing website for you. We can integrate with WordPress, you know, all of that fun stuff. But I'm, right now I'm just going to focus on the actual e-commerce functionality. So everything that you see that has anything to do with uh, items or categories, all this information, um, categories, subcategories, items, it's all maintained exclusively within the Sage 100 application. And I'll flip over to Sage here in a second or in a minute or two and show you that. So this is kind of a standard category um, view of applications that we have. We're, you know, we're in this category. This, we have some subcategories here. And then we have inventory items that are uh, within those subcategories. So for example, these are Sage 100 um, inventory items. Okay. I can drill into an item. So this is an item detail page. We have the main item image that is set up inside of uh, inventory management. It's on tab two. We have the ability to have additional images attached to the item. As you can see here, we're pulling the, the price code quantity break pricing for this particular item. Um, uh, we're looking at the uh, inventory warehouse table to see if it's in stock. We also add some user-defined fields into uh, the item table in Sage for uh, long description, uh, details, things like that. Um, we can also attach documents, you know, PDFs, 
Word documents for things like material safety data sheets or installation instructions or sales selects, things of that nature. And we leverage the alternate items set up within Sage to display related items down here. And there's a bunch of other um, little things that we can turn on or off. So one of the things I want to uh, point your attention to is the pricing. So now I'm going to log in. And now that I've logged in, notice that the pricing has changed. So this is demonstrating the customer-specific price-level pricing uh, features of the website. I'm logged in as a customer that has price-level one pricing, so now I'm seeing those price breaks and um, prices. Okay. Um, and now that I'm logged in, we can also access all the customer's information. So we can take a look at, for example, you know, customer uh, like address, you know, static information. Uh, there's summary information, you know, dates and uh, balances and credit limits and aging. Uh, we have access to all of the orders, right? So, for example, uh, they can see an order, they can drill into an order, see what items were ordered on the order. And if the order has been, you know, shipped or completed, you know, we can see the invoice that completed the order. And if tracking information was put into the system through the, through the shipping process in Sage 100, they can also track it right from within here. We have, and I should point out that these, these tabs don't have to all be turned on. We, we can turn them on or off as options depending upon what your requirements are. Uh, we have another invoices view which shows just all the invoices and if I drill into say this invoice I can actually take a look at the PDF copy of the invoice that was generated within Sage. So this is the paperless office invoice copy that was um, set up within Sage. Okay. And we have another view of invoices, so we probably pick you know, the appropriate one for your particular implementation. This one is actually open invoices, and this will show you um, credit memos, adjustments, and things of that nature. And also as a standard feature, it supports online bill pay. So for example, the user can come in and they can select invoices for payment. We get a running total up here. Then they can go into their credit card information and and then process a payment. And this will create a cash receipt entry within Sage that will pay off those invoices. Um, Purchase history. This is every item the customer's ever purchased. If you're familiar with the Sage sales order entry it, on the totals uh, tab, it's the same as the um, you get when you click on the red binoculars. And then we also have saved cart functionality. Okay. So um, with that, I want to go ahead and create a sales order and take a look at that process. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go pick an item. Go ahead and add it to my cart from here. We have a shopping cart that's persistent on the top of each page. So I can take a look at that. Go ahead and proceed to checkout. Now one of the great things about the way we integrate is that because we're so deeply integrated with Sage, it knows all about us. Right, so this is all the customer information from within <clears throat> Sage 100. And if you're familiar with the Sage uh, 100 demo data, you recognize the, uh, um, the ABF customer. Okay. It also knows about all of our on-file shipping addresses. So we can you know, do same as billing, we can add a new address, or pick one of the on-file shipping addresses. And I should also point out that these are somewhat optional. So if you have a situation where you don't want your customer editing their bill to information or adding ship to addresses, those are just options that we can turn on or off. And if the customer were to edit any of this information, those edits would flow into Sage. So it would actually update the customer record in Sage with the information, you know, create a new or update an existing uh, ship to. Okay. Um, this uh, particular demo is also integrated with Avalara Avatax. And so you can see down here, we're actually getting sales tax back from Avalara. And so when we create the order and goes into Sage, it'll have the appropriate tax schedule with the appropriate uh, uh, correct tax calculation, and we'll see that when we get into Sage. So at this point, I can 
review my order, I can go check out. So what, what's going to happen now is when I process this order, it's going to go out to American Payments and it's going to get a credit card authorization, which will then flow into Sage. Okay. So it's doing all that right now. It's, it's, it's recalculating the freight. It's double checking the sales tax. It's going out and getting a credit card uh, pre-authorization. And in a second here, it's going to give us a number. So I can take that number and I can go into um, Sage Sales Order Entry and we can take a look at the order that we created. So actually you can see that the credit card pre-authorization transaction has been processed. So that's telling us that we've got a, a valid pre-authorization from APS. You know, we have the header information, uh, the item that we ordered with the appropriate quantity and the correct pricing. We have the freight that the website calculated, uh, the um, sales tax as calculated, and then on the credit card tab, we have uh, all the authorization information and uh, transaction IDs and whatnot. So the order is now ready to be processed um, in Sage. And it's important to point out that throughout, throughout this entire process, we're not storing credit card information into anywhere, neither on the website application nor in Sage. The credit card uh, number and information like that is stored in the APS vault. So one of the benefits of, uh, of this is that you don't have to worry about um, PCI compliance with regards to storing credit card information. Of course, PCI compliance is always an issue that needs to be addressed, but in this case, you don't have the credit card information in your possession, so it can't be um, you know, stolen or breached from you. Okay. Um, and one of the other things I want to show is the real-time nature. So just really quickly, I'm going to create a new sales order in Sage. And we'll go see what happens on the website. Okay. Okay. Actually, let's do this. Let's actually run this item out of stock so we can actually see that. So the important thing to note here is that from when you're looking at the customer self-service portal on the website, it's not just orders that came from the website. It's any order in Sage. So if you had orders coming in via EDI or people or customer service folks are typing in orders off the phone or whatever, all that information is available to the customer on the portal. So if I go take a look now at my orders, we will see um, this is the order that I just typed in from within Sage. And you can see there's the 200 that I ordered. And then here is the order that we just placed um, from the web application. And if I go take a look at this item now, we'll see that this item is now out of stock. Okay, So it's just that fast. And it, it happens um, bidirectionally. So at this point, I want to actually turn it over um, to Patty from APS so she can show you the inner workings of the credit card processing uh, within the Sage 100 application. So Patty, it's all yours. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig, and, and thank you, Adrian. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my presentation is actually very brief because Craig has, been a, has done a very good job of explaining exactly how we interact not only with Clear9 and InSync, but Sage 100 in general. Um, I'm just going to choose any of these sales orders. I'd like to just briefly show the credit card tab and explain uh, exactly what happened when Craig pre-authorized the transaction. One of the things I'd like to mention and just uh, point out is the fact that we are PCI compliant, as he mentioned. Um, all of your credit card information is tokenized and saved in our vault, so you don't have to worry about that. The security is there, the validation through our partners with Avalara and um, Clear9, InSync, Skanko, and Starship. We take advantage of all of the information that they're providing within Sage uh, and validate the data provided to Visa and MasterCard in order to provide our merchants with the best rates through level three processing. So the transaction has been authorized. We allow you 
seven to 30 days to leave the authorization pending until you decide it's time to capture. I'm underlining seven to 30 days. This is an option that is not available with many processors. Um, the other thing with uh, level three processing, Visa and MasterCard will provide you with the best rates if you provide them with 13 to 16 fields every time you process a transaction. As you've seen in this presentation, it was as simple as processing the credit card. We've actually automated the process, and while you process the transaction, we send the information to Visa and MasterCard, therefore guaranteeing the best rates for you, especially with any business-to-business -business or business-to-government transaction. Um, one of the things that I'd like to point out and the main reason for our presentation is to show you how seamless our integration is not only with Sage 100 but throughout our ecosystem when it comes to the third party developers. You can see that Clear 9 establishes the foundation when it comes to obtaining all of the information for an order and then accepts the credit card information from American Payment Solutions. And as you will see throughout this presentation, once Avalara takes over, there's going to be validation and tax security and compliance. You're going to be able to work throughout the warehouse with Scanco and then continue to ship the items with V Technologies and Starship while at the same time accepting the final payment for your transaction, all within Sage 100 all without having to look outside of your system, and all taking advantage of what you've already preset within Sage 100. There will be a promotion that American Payment Solutions would like to offer you. Uh, anyone that's actually attending this webinar who would like to purchase any of the solutions being presented at this webinar, American Payment Solutions would like to help pay for a percentage of your purchase. Please stay tuned. I'm going to jump back in right after V Technologies and explain the promotion a little bit further and also show you once you capture the funds exactly what happens as far as American Payment Solutions is concerned. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you, John, from Avalara. Thank you very much. Thanks for everyone for hopping on. Uh, once again, Avalara is a technology company and we specialize in the automation of the sales tax calculation, exemption certificate management, and the file and remittance process. Uh, what's unique about our relationship with Sage is that we've been an OEM product since 2007. And that's important to everybody on the call today just because it shows that our solution works and it's tested uh, on a yearly basis. So I want to point out three main functions uh, within Sage 100 so you guys can come become a little bit more familiar uh, with Avalara's integration. We're going to look at Avatax as the tax schedule ID. We'll look at the address validation feature, and then we'll revisit a sales entry just so that you guys can see that in the event that you are placing a manual entry within Sage 100 itself. And the reason why we look at these functions is to highlight that nothing in your current workflow is actually going to change. If anything, it's going to become easier. So let's take a look at the tax schedule ID. So what we hear from customers is that they have to research tax rates, research product taxability, and then they're going to be updating the tax schedule IDs here in Sage 100. And then lastly, they're going to have to per they're going to have to pick the correct schedule to apply to the order or customer card that they're working with. And these are activities that are adding zero value to the company. I think that we can all agree on that. So I want to show you guys how you never have to worry about that again. So with the Avatax integration in place, all of the tax schedules are going to be replaced to Avatax. And what that does is it overrides, overrides the native functionality where Sage 100 would speak within itself and it triggers Sage 100 to send enough transactional data to Avalara's web service so that we can make a real-time tax determination and put it back onto the invoice. If anyone's bought anything online in the past 10 years, it's very similar to what you see when you're in a shopping cart and you put, click estimate sales tax or you submit your order and that sales tax is calculated. The same theory is applicable within the ERP system itself. Second, we'll look at the address validation tool. So we've all entered addresses incorrectly, but this feature is going to be pretty important because it fixes those mistakes and then it replaces them with a U.S. postal formatted address. So you'll see I can take out some pretty pertinent information, the zip code from that address. 
utilize that address validation functionality, and it's able to pinpoint that location. Why that's important is what we do when we scrub that address to the U.S. postal format, we're pulling the longitude and latitude coordinates from the address. And very similar to what you would see with Google Maps where you drop a pin, we're dropping a pin on a map. And all of our map technology is based off of the taxing jurisdictions. Many of you might be familiar with utilizing zip codes uh, for sales tax rates. It's going to get you close, but they're certainly not going to cover all the specialty and local jurisdictions that are located out there, uh, which can result in inaccuracies when it comes to reporting and compliance. Lastly, we'll run through a quick uh, sales transaction order. Uh, we saw Craig do this earlier. We'll come in, we'll enter our two uh, orders, and as we work through that workflow, you can see that that sales tax amount was applied. Uh, once again, we'll hop back. Let's say that needs to be adjusted. And we'll go to the totals tab again, and once again, that's uh, calculated in real time. So we've taken a, taken a look at Avatax within Sage 100, uh, the address validation functionality, and what the order entry process looked like. I hope everyone can agree that the workflow stays consistent. It's just eliminating some of those manual tasks that you typically see with sales tax compliance. You guys will never have to do any type of tax research or updates ever again within the system. It truly is a set it and forget it within Sage 100. Uh, and with that, we will move along with the workflow. All right, thanks, John. So this is Cody over at ScanCo, and what we want to show now is now that that order has been placed through the website with Clear9 and NSYNC, we've accepted the payment, processed that through APS, and of course we've made sure all our tax uh, rates are properly calculated with Avalara, that order's going to go to the warehouse. And when it's out at the warehouse, there's typically going to be a few different processes, you know, kind of depending on, on your warehouse setup. And what ScanCo does is provides warehouse automation. And we can take that from basic warehouse automation, uh, such as a one scan when it's shipping and it's creating your invoice or creating the shipping data entry in Sage, all the way up to more advanced shipping met methods like wave batch picking, where we are looking at all of our orders that need to be picked and assigning priorities to certain customers, uh, grouping orders together by uh, like uh, ship vias or product lines and picking everything to a central location and then packaging and sending that out. So there's a lot of options on that picking side, but what we're going to do today is just focus on a pick and pack process. So as you see here, um, I'm using an Apple iPod Touch we have a lot of transactions other than picking and shipping. So your receipt of goods, your physical counts, transfers, uh, bill of materials, all can be covered through our warehouse application. And for those manufacturing companies, we also have a work order and job ops automation if you need to automate any of your shop floor processes. So what I'm gonna do to pick this order is I'm gonna go into our picking transaction on the bottom left. And you'll see here that we actually have quite a few different picking methods. Wave picking is a picking method where we're picking more than one order at, the t at a time, and it's going to guide you through the warehouse in the most efficient manner and have you pick all of those orders while walking through just once. Order picking is one order at a time, and that is still directed to walk us through the warehouse. So when we go into picking, it's asking which warehouse we're in, and we're going to choose a staging location. So the staging location uh, in this case is our shipping location. And even if you don't have multi-bin cable, uh, which we can add with one software uh, with ACS multi-bin, you can still do the pick and pack process and directed picking without multi-bin. So we're going to choose this staging bin. Let me go ahead and scan uh, my barcoded pick ticket here. And you can see I have one order added. If I wanted to pick more than one order, I can just continue scanning those pick tickets. In this case, I'll just go ahead and hit start pick, and it's going to guide me. I'm saying for sales order CS103, 
go to bin location A20M and scan item 6655. So we go to that location, we scan the item, and we tell it how many we're picking. Now it's going to go to my next location, next item, and if I walk over to any location and for some reason the user, uh, which I doubt ever happens, would grab the wrong item and they scan that, it's going to let them know, please scan the proper item. So we'll go ahead and pick up the right item this time. We'll do our quantity. And at that point, it knows that we are done. It knows that we have picked everything for that order. And I can go ahead and just say yes. So now that that's been picked to the shipping location, that user can go back and start picking more orders while our packagers are now actually packing those items and then sending them through to be processed with Starship. Just like the picking, there's a few different ways to do that. Uh, we have some quick methods. Uh, one's called ship picked. And that's where we are basically saying that we trust everything that has been picked for that order is what's going out the door. And it creates the shipping data entry based on that. For this situation, we want a little more control. So we are going to go into shipping. It's asking for my shipper ID out of Sage. It's asking for the sales order. And it looks like we have already submitted that. So I did actually submit uh, on the confirmed picks uh, that order. So we're going to go to the previous order. And what it's going to do now is ask for our box. So we start at box one. This is your package level detail inside of Sage. So when you're packing, you're saying these items are going into box one, these items are going into box two, and so on. It might be a pallet, could be another unit of measure, but just know that the box is equal to your package inside of shipping data entry. So on this order, we're gonna go ahead and choose our first item and scan that. You'll see here that it shows our description the unit of measure, and the actual bin location that we are pulling that out of. So it has everything based on what was picked. We have our total quantity we need to ship, which in this order is only a quantity of one for this item. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, when you have everything in the box, you can just go ahead and hit next box. It'll auto increment to box two. And from here, you can scan your item. One thing that we always point out is if your items are not barcoded, every transaction you do have the option to hit look up and this will show you what's on that order. So this order is showing me my unresolved items. So I still have these two items to ship. So you'll see exactly what we have. And you can choose from that list if you don't have a barcode. And of course we can scan the item. It will show us once again uh, the bin location, that it was a stage two and the quantity that we need to ship. It is validating quantities, so it's never going to let you take the inventory negative. It's going to make sure that everything is being held at your uh, at the rules. So if you have certain bin locations that are not allowed uh, to be picked out of, it's not going to let you pick out of those bin locations. And once we're actually done with the shipping, we can just go ahead and tell the handheld that we are done. And at that point, it's going to create the shipping data entry in Sage. And once the shipping data entry is in Sage, it's going to go ahead and allow Starship to continue that order. So with that, we'll pass it over to Matt and he will be able to take you through the process from here. Okay, thank you, Cody. Okay, and as Adrian mentioned before, I'm Matt St. John from V Technologies. Um, so here I'm here today to kind of show you the one of the final steps of getting our order out the door. So with Starship right now, I'm going to be showing you our business object interface. Uh, with our BOI interface, actually, my shipper can just work right from the Starship software. Um, so that's what I have open here. 
Of course, we do have a Starship link where it allows your shipper to go into shipping data entry. Uh, but usually when we're using Scanco solution, uh, nice thing is you know, they're making that entry into shipping data entry. Um, so I usually recommend using BOI because really my shipper would have to go into shipping data entry and then just click a Starship button to get the information in Starship. So they're really just opening that module inside Sage to click a button. Um, so with our BOI interface, I can actually just pull in that order right from the Starship program. Um, so here I have it set up just pulling an invoice. Um, I'm using an enhancement um, that we do have that allows me to still put in the sales order number. So if my pick sheets are barcoded and I barcode that sales order number, I can still just scan that. Um, again, because ScanCo is making that entry into shipping data entry, Sage is automatically creating an invoice number for that order. Uh, so in this case, I would have to pull by invoice number, but usually at that time on our pick sheets, we don't know that invoice number, so it's not going to be on there. Um, so again, we have this enhancement that I can just still use that sales order number, and what it's doing is it's relating that sales order to the correct invoice that Sage created. So just put in that order. Um, we really map all our fields from Sage, uh, very easy user interface to use. You can change mappings. We can pull in custom fields if you have user-defined fields. Um, so here, the chip via, I'm looking at that. That's automatically selecting my carrier service billing type. Um, the ship vias and the mappings could have a one-to-many relationship. So again, it's going to select carrier service. Um, this order happens, I have it going to an international location. Uh, going to Canada. Um, so a nice thing with that and those one-to-many relationships is that this order was actually just UPS ground, uh, but I can also set up a default international service. So I don't have to set up you know, a UPS standard to Canada, uh, UPS expedited ship vias. I can, if I'm just kind of going to use one standard one, I can just continue just having a ship via called UPS ground. And as you can see here, Starship will automatically change it to my default service. And these fields are automatically going to be selected based off the ship via. Um, I can manually change them. Doesn't mean you know they're written in stone here. Uh, sender, that's just the information from the sales order. Okay. And we do support, I'm sorry, that the that is actually the company that I have open in Sage. Uh, we do support multiple companies as well as multiple locations and warehouses. Uh, the recipient is the information coming from the sales order, so that's from the ship too. I uh, really want to bring your attention down to the packaging view. And I'm going to expand all my items. So again, however I define that order, as, as Cody showed you on the handheld scanner, um, that's how Starship's going to return it into the program. Okay. So we have the, the two boxes. You know, We just put them in standard packs inside shipping data entry. But with Starship, we do have custom packaging. You can most certainly store. So maybe this item here goes in a medium box. Nice thing with using Starship's custom boxes, um, it will automatically populate the dimensions for your shipper. So one less thing they have to worry about. Um, also on there, you know, if you don't have a scale, we will return weights from item maintenance. Um, or the other thing with Starship is we have a, our own database for all your inventory items. Okay. So Starship's automatically going to start learning all your inventory items. It will store them. A nice thing with that, you know, you can use, have Starship look at item maintenance for maybe item number and description, and then you can use Starship's database to get information such as the NMFC code. You know, that's not a normal field inside of Sage. Along that, the inter for international shipments, uh, we have our own database that links to each of your inventory items for the required international information. So as you can see here, country of manufacturer, uh, we have a lookup for Schedule B codes or the harmonized codes, EEI, certificate of origin. So again, all that's just going to be stored right inside a Starship. And maybe on my second box here, I want this to go into a large box. Right. So my shipper can then select packages uh, when they want to. They can then rate shop if they need to at time of shipment. Uh, included with Starship is the ability to do this from sales order entry right inside of Sage. So at time of order, I can have my customer service or sales reps actually reach out um, and they can pull in. What we do is make a call right to the carrier's API services. And so we are going to return list pricing. We're 
going to return your live negotiated rates that you have with the carrier. Um, and then also from when I do this from sales order entry, we also add a third column which is called applied rate. And applied rate, what that is, is plus or minus any freight rules. Because with Starship, you can set up freight rules. Uh, you know, maybe you want to give free, custom, uh, free shipping over X amount of dollars, certain customers a discount on freight. Uh, you can do that with freight rules. So here I just rate shopped. Um, really in this demo system, I really only have U, uh, UPS and uh, LTL carrier. Uh, but I just change it so I can see all, all my carriers. You know, you can do scenarios where, hey, you know, this is just a parcel shipment, so just show me parcel carriers. Just so you can see, you know, I can see all the rates. I can do by delivery date, business days, total days, contract, and list pricing. Okay, LTL carriers list pricing is zero because they do not publish list price. And then with this, uh, we can also do carrier rules. So maybe I want to do a, a ship via called Best Way. I can set up a rule that tells Starship, hey, automatically select the carrier and or service. Uh, you know, that may be going to be the least expensive, but also get the package there in the least amount of delivery days. And again, Starship will just look at this database automatically and say, oh, you know, I think uh, UPS Standard of Canada is the one I should pick because based off my criteria, you know, it's cheapest, it might take an extra day, but it's saving me a bunch of money. So then when my shipper is ready to ship and process, they can click the icon up top here. They can click F5. Um, one thing I did for it, get mentioned for those barcoded pick sheets, if they are both barcoded, you could hook up just a regular wedge type scanner. Um, so again, you know, that pick sheet can come over to your shipping station and they can just slide that under, scan that barcode, and have Starship automatically pull in the shipping information. Uh, once I hit ship and process, my shipper will get the shipping documents. Um, so this is just what we call our smart label. I just use it for the demo, uh, but the smart label, as you can see, does a shipping label as well as the packaging list together on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. This is just an option. Most certainly could send my shipping label to a thermal printer. And I can also send my packaging list to a thermal printer if I'd like, um, or most certainly can just send it to a laser printer, just print it on paper. Okay, so box one, get box two. Uh, because this is an international shipment, I'm gonna get my commercial invoice. Um, our shipping documents can be customized. So, you know, maybe I want to have the signature line date field already pre-populate for my shipper. I can set that up. And then I'll get my NAFTA form if I need that. On these forms, order header, line item detail, automatically going to populate. And as I mentioned, you know, we can customize them. So you can have signature, name, date, you know, kind of save my shipper some more time. One less thing they have to fill out. Okay. Each document, you can create unlimited templates. And then on each template for these documents, you can also assign printing rules. Um, so maybe, you know, a customer needs the commercial, uh, commercial invoice to look a certain way. Uh, you can create a template for that customer and then have it print, you know, only when that customer places an order. Okay, oops, get out of my way. Okay. So again, my shipper is going to click ship and process. They get their shipping documents. Now they're kind of in the rinse repeat. They're just going to go on to their next order. For the front office, I'm going to just jump back into Sage here. I'm going to go into Invoice Data Entry. And I'm going to go to my last invoice. So here's the sales order we just shipped, CS103. On my header tab, tracking information. Okay, so You can see here Starship automatically writes back package breakdown, tracking numbers, carrier weight, freight amounts. Um, this lives inside of Sage's package tracking table, so I can use their hyperlink here to track. I can also use our item to box detail button. All this information flows through into history. So I can, you know, go in through customer maintenance, invoice history to look up this information at a later date. And then on the totals tab, of course, we're writing back freight amount. Again, if I had freight rules set up, um, it would also write back, include those freight rules. Freight rules you can have go on top of the list price or you can determine them to go on top of the contract price. That's up to you. And you can also set up freight write back rules. So, you know, maybe in some cases, uh, like in this case, maybe, you know, when we place the order on the web, freight was already charged. Uh, we can simply set up a freight rule that says, hey, you know, do not write back the freight amount or don't overwrite um, this freight amount field. Okay. And a couple of 
other programs that come with Starship. Uh, one is our e-notification program. So this is our email viewer. Um, e-notify, this is included again with Starship. It doesn't require any additional seats or licenses. Um, it can go on as many workstations as you'd like. But you can use e-notify to design your own custom templates. Nice thing with using these templates, you can put your company logo on there, build your brand awareness. Uh, templates are very easy to design, so I can include Sage fields like PO number, sales order number, let my customer know how it was shipped, of course where it's going to, package breakdown, estimated delivery date coming from the carrier, so it is accurate. Uh, nice thing with this package table here, the tracking numbers are hyperlinked, so these can help reduce those inbound calls of customers just calling in looking for their order. Uh, maybe you want to do a template for a coupon code, you can hyperlink the coupon code. I have customers that do survey forms, uh, but on each template that you create, you can also set up sending rules. So again, maybe I want this coupon template here with the 20% off, only go to certain customers. I could create a rule on this template and you know the rule take effect and it would only go to those certain customers. Again, that's included and also included is our dashboards program. So same thing with dashboard, I can install this on a, as many machines as I'd like. Um, you know, does not affect any user seats or licenses. With Starship, you just need seats for whoever is going to be inside Starship shipping at the same time. They are concurrent like Sage. Uh, but dashboard is just a reporting tool. You know, gives kind of warehouse shipping information. Um, front office has access. Uh, so I can see, and I have just some performance indicators up here, shipment status. Uh, shipment by user. Each of your um, shippers can have their own login into Starship. Uh, you can also assign all your own security roles for each of those users. Uh, so here I can track and see who's shipping what. Um, chart of top five customers. I can see, you know, this is by shipment, so I can see my top five. Nice thing with these widgets, I can drill down even further. So maybe I want to get shipment record detail for one of these orders. I show this screen because if you track from dashboard, this is the same screen you'd gain access to. So if someone does call in, you can track the package right from dashboard. And as you can see, I will have access to all the shipping information, you know, date, estimated delivery, the status of it, you know, package breakdown, weights, line item detail. Okay? Um, all the way down to proof of delivery. If the carrier supports it, I could actually see a signature if it was signed for. And then a couple of the reports you can run from dashboard. Two I always mention because customers run these, if not daily, weekly. We have a late delivery report. This is just going to go out, compare the guaranteed delivery date to the actual delivery date. It's going to let you know of any package that wasn't delivered on time. So you can contact the carrier, try to get a refund. And this one is a charge comparison report. I'll just quickly run this one. I can run this by my freight or by parcel shipments. I can run it by carrier or all my carriers. I can even run it by certain account numbers. Over. And if I had multiple locations, I can run it by location. Uh, but nice thing with this report, and it is actually going to compare, and make this bigger here. I'm just going to show me all my orders. It's going to compare me to the applied. So again, that's what I charge the customer for the shipment. It's going to compare it to my contract charge. And then the third column is the plus or minus. So if I lost money on any order here, it would definitely show me. So it's a quick, easy report you can run. Make sure you're breaking even. Um, you know, definitely again, it's going to show you the, the orders you lost money on. Okay. Yeah, that's actually all I wanted to show you. So I will pass this back over to Craig, I believe. Yeah, and then um, <clears throat> give it to Patty here. Okay.
Craig, did you want to begin or did you want me to go straight into invoice data entry? No, no, I'll go straight into invo uh, to invoice data entry, then I'm going to wrap up. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I apologize for that confusion. It was on my end. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the workflow is very seamless. Uh, from the very beginning with C9, I'm sorry, Clear9 and InSync, uh, Avalara, the one group with Scanco, Starship, and um, now again with American Payment Solutions. All of the fields, or the majority of the fields that were preset in page 100 to use with all of, with all of the third-party products that are involved today, we take advantage of those fields. You don't have to reset them. Uh, we take advantage of them, we send them to Visa and MasterCard guaranteeing the lowest rates for you. Just so you get an idea, rates can go down from 2.85, which is very typical, down to 1.85, and in some cases, if the transactions are over $10,000, you can even get the rate to go as low as 0.05%. Um, and that is simply by going through level 3 processing, which we have completely automated. Um, Level 3 processing is available only within the with businesses that process within the continental U.S. and the transactions have to be either business to business transactions or business to government transactions. We do have a migration utility so if, if you're working with other processors you won't have to worry about keying in all of the credit card information. We will help determine exactly what percentage might have to be keyed in and what percentage we will be able to migrate. We also offer next day funding. So what I'm going to, going to demonstrate right now is at, at the uh, point where you actually have to, and Craig, I'm sorry, would you mind, it's not allowing me to click on the icon at the bottom of your screen for invoicing. Really all I was going to do is um, invoice a sales order. You're able to invoice sales orders individually or in batches as you would do so within the Sage 100 system. Nothing really changes. Remember, the pre-authorization can last anywhere between 7 and 30 days. So now that I have the uh, sales order on the screen, if the sales order has been pre-authorized, you can see the transaction ID is already there and it will indicate the sales order has been pre-authorized. Once I capture the funds, you will see the funds available in your bank account within 12 hours. So I know many processors will say that they have next day funding. We actually offer 12 hour funding. Uh, we guarantee that the funds will appear in your bank account if you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, by 9 a.m. the next morning you will have the funds available in your bank account. Uh, it's very simple to get an analysis of your current rates and fees. Keep your processors on their toes. We will provide you with credit card processing 101. We will show you how to demystify your existing merchant statement and understand where the fees are coming from, who's making the money where, which of those fees are coming from Visa and MasterCard, and where it is that your processor is making their money. We, we show you all of that because it is not our goal to get you to switch. Our goal is to educate you to the point where you will be able to decide exactly which processor is best for you and your company. Um, as you can see, the transaction has been pre-authorized. And I'm not going to complete the update, Craig, unless you need it for anything else that you'd like to show. But at this point, in order to update the system, you basically go through your standard end-of-day process with Sage, update your invoices. You will be at that point updating any of the pertinent modules, and you will also be updating our APS portal, which is available to you in case you ever need to process credit card transactions outside of Sage. Remember, one thing I'd like to just reiterate one more time, if anybody is interested in purchasing any of the enhancements that we have presented to you today, American Payment Solutions would like to help pay a percentage, and that percentage can very well be 100% of that product you'd like to purchase. All we ask is that you send us your merchant statement, and once we analyze them, we can tell you exactly how much money we can save you with any of these third-party products. Uh, with that, Craig, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Okay, thanks, Patty. So, I mean, essentially, what I was going to do is just kind of tie this, um, tie everything back to the, 
the, the, the customer self-service portal. So in doing so, um, you know, once everything has been, you know, picked, packed, and shipped, and, you know, invoiced, the customer can then go back to the portal and have a look at their order, and they can see an order status. Now, we didn't update the sales journal for that particular um, sales order uh, or invoice, but the user can go back and they can see, okay, you know, the order has been completed, this was the sales order, this was the invoice number that it was completed on, and all of that. And then um, they can even go pay the invoice online. If you know if that if uh, if they would wish to do so, and so I mean essentially the idea here is that you know the customer can self-service, they can start the process, the orders just automatically flow through uh, the Sage 100 workflow through the credit card processing and the sales tax, um, you know the warehouse management, pick, pack, ship, and then the information flows back to the customer self-service portal so that the customers can see that and you know it so it. Um, reduces cost with regards to customer service, it, it, you know, it's more accurate, uh, the customer's happier because they get the information as soon as it's been posted, et cetera. And, you know, and, the, and the customer can even retrieve copies of PDF invoices that were generated in Sage as part of the, you know, the invoicing process. And essentially that's it. And so with this, I'd like to turn it back over to Adrian to see if there's any questions or you know, wrap up. Thank you, Craig. Uh, we do have a few questions here, and I'm going to go ahead and flash up the con contact information for everybody. Uh, so if anybody would like to get in touch directly, here's all the presenters' contact information. Feel free to, to contact everyone directly. I will be sending out a follow-up email with the recording. Uh, and all the contact information so you can reach out at your leisure. Uh, and we do have a few questions here. Are there any provisions for international address validation? Thank you, Clint. And I believe that would be for both Avalara and Starship. So uh, go ahead, John, and answer first for Avalara, and then we'll talk about Starship. Yeah, can you, repeat the, can you repeat the question real quick? Are there provisions for international address validation? Uh, that's something that I would have to get with our sales engineering team on, but if you can contact me directly, I'll get you the answer on that. And I am going to uh, flash up a poll here for the audience. If you can take a moment to answer this poll, that would be awesome. Are you interested in learning more about any of the following? And you can click, click as many of these that you're interested in. And let's see. And Patty, so on, Patty, on the Starship side, um, we do, I didn't mention it, but we do validate ZIP plus four. Um, so yes, and we will actually use UPS, USPS, as well as FedEx's web services uh, to make sure the address is valid. So basically what UPS says, you know, if you're shipping UPS, um, what they have in their ba database that is valid is what Starship uses. And this, this is Craig from Clear9. I just wanted to add to that that uh, our website application also integrates directly with FedEx and UPS and the Postal Service, and we can also um, validate um, addresses on the website before they get sent into Sage. Okay, thank you for that, guys. Um, can Clear9 handle option bills on website? Thank you, Donna. Yes, we can. So we can handle uh, the bill of materials options uh, pretty much like they would handle in sales order. So yes, we can. We can also handle um, exploded sales kits and, and stuff like that as well. And I just wanted to remind everybody out there that there is a question mark right next to your name on the webinar pane. So if you should have any questions, go ahead and click on that question mark button and indicate your question in the dialog box that opens up and I'll read off your question. Uh, what is the pricing? Is there a bundle pricing for all of these solutions if purchased together? So, Craig, I'll go ahead and let you start with the Clear9 application. Okay, well, um, I, I guess the short answer is we, we would have to figure that out. Um, I'm sure that we could come up with uh, good competitive pricing for that. 
And then um, if you could just elaborate on, you know, how your pricing works, Clear Nine, uh, Craig, for Clear9. Oh, I see. Okay. So our application is um, it's, it's sold as a, as a software application license, so it's not um, a hosted application or monthly fees. Generally speaking, the e-commerce solutions with all the integration tools start at about 10,000 implemented. And they can go up to, you know, around 20, depending upon options. And then, uh, John, can you um, just review Avalara's basic pricing? Yeah, Avalara is a consumption-based model, very similar to what you probably have your cell phone set up as. If you say, hey, AT&T, I typically use four gigabytes a month, uh, they're going to tell you an appropriate tier that you fall in. And we look at how many invoices or transactions you're generating on a yearly basis. And if someone says, you know, we do 12,500, we'll associate you with the closest tier, which would be 14,400. Uh, there's one-time activation costs, uh, as well as an annual service fee. All of our pricing goes directly through your Sage partner, um, so we can all hop on the phone and review that information. And as I understand it, uh, Patty, with your solution, there is no cost to switch over to APS. It's actually a cost savings opportunity, correct? That is correct. We actually provide a service. Um, we charge per transaction. Be transparent when it comes to exactly what we will charge. Uh, we do not charge for the credit card processing module. Installation, implementation, training, and support are also at absolutely no charge to our merchants. And what I do want to repeat is our offer to help pay for any of the solutions that you are interested in that uh, were viewed during today's presentation. And Cody, um, just quickly with Scanco, how is that pricing based? So the, the Scanco is actually available as purchase or subscription based, and it, it varies widely based on the different transactions that you're looking to automate and options to add in. So that's definitely something better to kind of have a, a call to go over what exactly you're looking for to get the pricing. And Matt, could you just quickly review the Starship pricing model? Yeah. It's like Cody just mentioned, it's better to just kind of sit down or discuss over a phone call because Starship is by, you know, it depends on the carriers you use, you know, how many shippers. Um, so, and again, it, it goes through the reseller if you currently have a Sage reseller. So, so there's a, some parameters there to consider. Yeah. Okay, so we have another question from Donna. Thank you so much. Um, we have, does Clear9 only integrate with APS for credit card processing, or does it also, and Javier had this question as well, does it also integrate with Sage Payment Solutions and other credit card processors? Yeah, we do. We integrate with Sage Payment service, uh, Services out of the box as well as APS, and there's a couple other ones that we integrate with out of the box. We typically only integrate out of the box with payment solutions that have end-to-end -end integration with Sage. But if you needed something else like, you know, PayPal or, you know, Authorize.net or something, we could certainly handle that as well. And how does Clear9 handle order history for items not offered on the website? Thank you, Greg. Yeah, we display it. So it doesn't matter if the order came in from the website or if the items are available on the website. The only difference in the self-service, uh, the customer portal, is whether or not you can drill down into the item to get item detail. So if an order has items that aren't available on the website, you can still see the item number and description and historical pricing in the history inquiry. You just can't order the item or drill down into it. And Shirley has a question. Uh, will, will all of these processes work with Magento? And so, Craig, I'm not sure if you ever if you compete I can with Magento? That. Okay. Um, not really. We, there's some overlap. So the NSYNC solution and our solution, essentially, you know, we, we have the application that we've built, which is really tightly integrated with Sage. But we can also integrate with all kinds of other solutions, you know, Magento, Shopify, all of that stuff we can integrate with. And we have connectors for all of that. In addition to that, we also uh, just rolled out integration with marketplaces. So we can do Amazon Jet, eBay, order in, into Sage. And we actually have clients that we've done multiple websites for that are also doing um, uh, marketplace sales. And all of the orders are coming in 
um, through one funnel into Sage through the InSync module. And in addition to that, we often do, uh, our, our expertise, in addition to the web stuff, is, is really integration. Uh, both Bob Richter and myself have been doing this for almost 30 years. And um, we often do one-off um, web services integration for Sage 100. So if you have a client or you have a customer that wants to integrate directly into Sage, you want to pull orders or whatever in, we also specialize in that using our platform. So that's probably a long-winded answer to the question. <laughs> And just in case anyone interested out there, I know that all the other third parties have experience with Magento as well. So um, I would just get with anyone that you're interested in and see how they've worked with Magento, um, in addition to what uh, Craig just uh, spoke about. And I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll. I see 54% of you have voted. Thank you so much for that. And then I'm going to just flash up another poll out there while we look and see if we have any other questions. So if you're currently using any of these solutions, we just want to take a quick poll and see which ones you're using. That would be great if you could answer that question. And thank you, everybody. I realize we're seven minutes over the hour, and spending an hour with us is uh, we are very appreciative of that. And if you have any other questions, please go ahead and click on that question mark button, and we'll announce the questions for all of the uh, presenters today. And if you don't have any questions, please look out for the follow-up email with the recording and all the contact information. And we have a question that just came in from Bob. Uh, yes, we will send the recording. Thank you, Bob, for that. And I see 45% of you have voted out there. And if you could just take a moment to answer this question. We really appreciate it. And uh, presenters, would you like to close with any comments? Craig, just Matt. Think, just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their day. I know it's difficult sometimes, but we really appreciate everyone joining us. Yes, I, I second that as well. Thank you very much for your time today. Gotcha. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this poll, and I will share the results of this poll. It looks like 52% had voted. So it looks like we have uh, quite a few Starship users out there. So everybody, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. We'll be inviting everyone to the next Sage 100-related webinar as well. And with that said, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Take care.